Let me tell you about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees and the predatory carnivorous Venus flytrap, of course. Seasonal Science brings you Venus flytraps. Head to your local botanical garden this April or May and you'll likely see a small white flower sprouting amid the intimidating jaws of the Venus flytrap. But how does a carnivorous plant avoid eating the insects that pollinate it? That is a question that scientists are asking as well, and although they don't yet know all of the insects that pollinate wild fly traps, they have some ideas of how it all might happen. First, the flower of the Venus flytrap is located on a stalk far above the trap. And for a plant whose meals include lots of crawling insects, flying pollinators that stay in the higher altitudes have a decent chance of avoiding the trap and pollinating successfully. Secondly, the flowers may appeal to a different set of insects altogether. For a plant that eats lots of carrion-seeking insects that are attracted to that moody-colored interior, mm. the type of pollinator attracted to its flower may not even give the traps a second look. The jury is still out, but what scientists do know is that beyond sunlight, water, and the occasional mineral-rich morsel, the Venus flytrap blooms better after a good fire. Yep, you heard that right. Besides the ability to survive a fire, flytraps flower quite nicely once all those taller, shade-producing shrubs are out of the picture. But a word of warning. If you are in the 74-mile habitat in southeastern North Carolina that is home to flytraps and you stumble across one, don't be tempted to pick the flower or the plant. Due to its status as threatened, if you poach a Venus flytrap, it's a felony. And you're looking at 25 to 39 months in prison and a hefty fine. So as springtime rolls around, why not head to the botanical gardens and take some time to stop and smell the Venus flytraps? Mm.